What's going on, Sense fans? Welcome back to the New Era Sense podcast today. And today I'm not with Jordan. Uh, I'm actually with Jamie today. Jordan's out sick. Um, and we actually are also joined by Angus Crookshank. So um, we'll welcome Angus on here. How you doing, Angus? Hey, guys. How are you doing? Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, not a problem. I'm doing pretty good. Um, nice, nice night out. How you doing, Jamie? Oh, man. I just got out of my poli sci class. Mm-mm. Nope. Not liking uni so far. <laughs> <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm. all right but we move we move <laughs> um so yeah first off um how's how's the leg feeling angus you uh you were doing really good in camp um from what we've seen and from what everybody's been tweeting out and whatnot um and a lot of people are really excited to see you maybe even get a chance in the nhl this year um but obviously cut short due to the uh leg injury so how's how's that going yeah obviously it's uh bump in the road here um kind of delays some goals of mine for uh for a little bit but uh i mean the legs doing well i mean i'm going to be spending my time here in auto with the training staff here and all the doctors here which i think uh is a good thing for not only my development but also to get my knee back to full full health and hopefully they could return this coming year um yeah i mean obviously it's unfortunate i thought it was having a pretty good camp as well um but you know what it's that's just how hockey is sometimes it's stuff happens and uh you know you just kind of have to roll with the punches and that's i just got to take it a day at a time honestly as cliche as that sounds yep. but uh honestly you just try to keep the most positive mindset possible yeah absolutely um so is there anything you're like kind of working on obviously it's hard to train or anything with uh, a busted leg but uh is there anything you're working on that you can work on yeah honestly like uh kind of work in my upper body right now i mean that's all i can really do but some mobility stuff with uh my lower body and that sort of stuff just making sure stuff's not uh completely locking up on me and i mean at the end of the day um realistically i'll need surgery here so just being able to give myself the best possible outcome or give myself the best chance for the best possible outcome is uh what i'm focused on right now um and obviously i can stick handle and that sort of stuff so i can at least keep some sort of hockey going in my life um but yeah no that's kind of the stuff that i'm working on right now nothing too nothing too crazy a lot of i mean like i said a lot of upper body some of the trainers in the gym are going to start calling me arnold here pretty soon but (laughs) (laughs) yeah fair enough it's good to hear that you're kind of doing what you can so exactly no they do they do a great job there with all the trainers i'm very fortunate to have the people around me that i do with the organization i mean i'm in very good hands here awesome all right, I'll hop in, I guess. So um, when the hit initially happened, like right away, did you know it was going to be as bad as it was? Like, I think I'm asking here. It's like, did you initially think it would be as long as an injury? Because it's been reported that's about four, six months. Crazy. Like, what was your initial thoughts, you know? I don't know. Honestly, like, uh, like everyone's kind of had, like, your odd, like, strained MCL or hyperextended knee. I mean, I th- if you ask most hockey players, they've had some sort of injury along those lines. So, I mean, kind of when it happened, it was an innocent play. We just got tangled up, me and this other guy on the on the Canadians. And I didn't really think much of it, to be honest. I mean, then I – obviously, it hurt a lot. Um, so I knew that was an issue, but I didn't think it was going to be to the extent that, uh, that it was, obviously. I mean, I found out pretty much right after uh, – right after it happened, obviously being on the training table, seeing the doctors that were at the game. So obviously it was kind of crushing in the moment, but I just kind of have to move forward with it. And I mean, like I said earlier, it's just a bump in the road and trying to make, I'm going to try my best to make a full recovery and still achieve my goal of playing the NHL. Let's hope so. (laughs) Um, And it looks like you're doing a really good job on your way to that so far. Um, again, a lot of, uh, Sens fans are really excited for you. Um, and just to see where your career goes and yeah, we're both pretty big advocates. Of yeah. Oh, game, yeah. So <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> not a problem. Um, so uh, in the past, um, it's been reported by a lot of people and I believe you've said it, that your game kind of resembles Brendan Gallagher's. Um, and so like that's providing the offense as well as being in your face and just kind of playing almost a very Ottawa set game like this identity really goes with the team now um so what's it like kind of working that into the system like did you work with dj on that um 
and like was that kind of part of your role in camp or kind of walk us through what the expectations were yeah well weirdly enough like i'd i'd never really looking back on my career i'd never really been a pessimist at school the odd time i was uh junior i wasn't really but kind of talking to the development guys like sean donovan jenny jesse winchester and all those guys they said like hey like you see what Marshawn, like Gallagher, Yanni Gord is able to do with their game. Like they don't really even have to say much. I mean, I know Marshawn links, licks guys, uh, visors <laughs> and everything, but uh, that obviously not that, but like the way they're, they're always like in your face all the time and just always like, not even like saying anything really just like pestering you all the time, like being hard on the four check, finishing your check, maybe giving the, giving you an extra whack after the whistle or, being in the goalie's face 24 7 it one it help it helps draw penalties because guys get pissed off and will take undisciplined stuff but i mean i mean the development staff just kind of said like it'd be a good feather in your cap and i was like we kind of i kind of thought about it i was like hey like that's not a bad not a bad idea i mean i like to kind of i like to mix it up i like to be in, engaged especially in front of the net and that sort of stuff and then i tried to apply as much as i can when i was in belleville last year and uh I know there's a video out there where uh, <laughs> a guy took a tried to jump me and cross check me in the face a couple times. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Uh, <laughs> but like honestly, like going back to that, I didn't even say a word to the guy. I literally, I stood up when I drew the penalty and I laughed in his face. And that was that. that. And then that was about it. So kind of stuff like that, and just kind of make like always letting guys know you're right there. It uh, not only makes people undisciplined you're playing against but also it uh it helps the team and it kind of gets the team going as well oh yeah yeah so like on this team obviously there's brady kachuk um and even like ridley greg coming in like does it does it excite you to see all these guys at the play that kind of game and i guess a follow-up question do you think ridley greg is going to be the kind of guy to lick people too oh my god <laughs> well uh i i'm rooming with ritter and i played with ritter both games and rookie camp both yeah. the rookie tournament games and uh he and I had some pretty good chemistry going, but uh, I don't think he's going to be one of the guys to like someone who's a pretty quiet kid. Uh, <laughs> really? That's, that kind of surprises me, actually. That is a surprise. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a pretty quiet, reserved kid away from the rink. And, but, I mean, obviously a, a great kid. Like, he and I have become really close over this past couple of weeks here. But, uh, you know, he's, he's going to be a very good player, though. And obviously, like, you see the identity of what DJ and Pierre are trying to cut out create here in Ottawa and I think it's it's going to be a team that's going to be hard to play against every single night and going to irritate people constantly which I think well not I think I know it will be a successful formula and hopefully I can be a part of that absolutely all right so um you got called up last year right so you didn't really get to go to AHL camp I guess the biggest question is like what was the biggest difference for you like coming to the NHL rookie camp for the Sens and the difference of the NCAA camps you went to is it like size, speed, talent? Like, what was the biggest difference? Kind of the sheer expectation that's put upon you each day, and when you're on the ice. Um, obviously, the game's bigger, faster, stronger as you come into pro, but uh, kind of the expectations of you as a player, even in practice and in games, like you're. There's not as much hand holding as there is in junior hockey in college. You're expected to perform night in, night out. And the biggest thing I noticed was like even in practice, like the execution is so high. Like every pass is on the tape. It's a crisp pass. Like there's no kind of weak little sauce passes across ice. Like if there is a sauce pass, it's literally a wrist shot coming at you. And you gotta be you gotta be able to handle it. So it's uh the execution level was the biggest thing I noticed when I came up. And then obviously it's a whole other level when you go into NHL training camp and skating with the guys who have already played in the NHL. And the coaches, coaches don't even have to say anything. It's just a pure expectation upon you. Well, we've seen the Twitter bits where everyone's just yelling at each other on that. You see DJ on that. It's, it's crazy. I can only imagine, man. Oh, it's, it's fun. I mean, every, at the end of the day, everyone wants to win. Oh, yeah. So I think, Obviously, it may come out as us yelling at everyone yelling at each other, but it comes from the right place and everyone's passionate and wanting to get get the team going in the right direction. Of course, of course. 
Yeah, awesome. So uh, taking it off the ice a little bit, uh, I did a little bit of creeping and saw your prom suit and yeah. I thought it was fantastic. So are you the kind of guy that's like, you're going to pride yourself on your swagger? So I think of um, like all the suits that people wear in the rinks, um, even like Jonathan Marsh so with the Vegas Lamborghini. Like, are you going to be that guy that walks in with all the swagger in the world? Okay, well, one, I don't have the money for a Lamborghini. <laughs> yet. Uh, yet. yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day, knock on wood. But, uh, I mean, honestly, like, I'm huge into kind of the men's fashion, to be honest with you. I kind of pride myself on my suit game. I still have that suit, honestly. That's, like, that's my game day suit. Nice. So, like, Solid. It's still, I still wear it to games now. But, uh, I mean, I still I have another kind of, I think I have three or four suits and obviously as I kind of get older, I definitely want to continue to expand it, but I love kind of the fashion side of things. I know it's kind of growing a bit more within the game and athlete, like players expressing themselves a little bit more. And I mean, I'm all for it. Like you see what guys are able to do in kind of the NBA and the NFL and kind of show their true colors a little bit more versus just wearing your traditional black or Navy suit. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm all for it, to be honest with you. It's more, it's fun and guys get, uh, Obviously, I get uh, the odd comment like, uh, what, what are you, Don Cherry, or a nice clown suit or something like that. But, hey, I mean, hey, as long as you, you're confident and you love wearing it, that's all that matters, I think. Exactly. They're Looking just good jealous. for yourself. No, no, I mean, I know some guys are a little more reserved with their suits, but I, like, I, like, I kind of like being out there. Funny enough, actually, one of the reasons I got that suit. So I follow Floyd Mayweather on Instagram. Ooh. Okay. I saw, I saw uh, Money Mayweather wear it in a photo, wear it in a photo and I – I was looking at suits like a couple weeks later. I was like, no way. This is literally the exact same suit. I pulled up the Instagram. It's the exact same suit. And it was like, it was on sale at the, at the place I got it from. And I was like, it's my lucky day. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, stars are aligning. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, that's a, quite, quite truthfully. That's the answer I was hoping for is a big suit guy. Oh yeah. No, it's, it's, all, it's all about the suit. So you got to look the part. <laughs> so is, is there anybody that you're like, you really appreciate their suit style in the NHL? Like, is there one name that really stands out? I think kind of the OG, I think for everybody is Lundqvist. Yeah. I think, I think most guys can probably agree with that, but I mean, obviously kind of the younger guys now, like Matthews, I mean, as much as it's painful to say, obviously we're, we're all cheering for the Sens here and going for, going for the centers. A lot of guys <laughs> have do a pretty good job with their, with their style and then you kind of see it more and more honestly it's more of a i think it's still kind of more of a european thing i mean yeah. you see the swedes kind of coming in with their with some nice suits and that sort of stuff but uh i think it'll continue to kind of expand as the game continues to grow and everyone's trying to create their own brand and all that sort of stuff yeah perfect all right cool um so did you meet any high character guys? I don't like that the way I said that. Like high character guys, like at camp for the first time, you know, like anyone stood up, stood out, exactly. Yeah, I mean, everyone's. I think the scouting staff does a great job of doing their homework. I mean, everyone that I've yeah. met here, prospect wise, and that I've played with, are great guys. Like, I mean, the rookie team, we pretty much came together and bonded pretty easily within a couple of days there. So, I mean, I think they probably put. But I mean, I'm not obviously not in the, the scouting room, but I'm sure they pride themselves on getting good people as well versus just a good hockey player. And I think that is almost as equally as important. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, guys that I'm super close with, I'm close with obviously Ridley that I mentioned earlier, uh, Igor Sokolov, um, Cole Reinhardt, Mark Kaslik, all those guys. And they're all awesome guys. I mean, I was lucky enough to play with those guys in Belleville last year and they were, they welcomed me with open arms, like no no kind of reservations against me, which I was thankful for. And obviously we kind of carried that friendship into the, into camp here and hopefully for the rest of the year. Oh yeah. Definitely love that. Um, a follow up to that is like, so last camp camp, basically, even though it was like coming straight out of COVID, we saw like Timmy go under the wing of step on a little bit. I was just wondering, have any vets come up to you offered to help you out with anything? Like what's the vibe going on like that? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, a little bit. Um, I mean, Austin Watson a bit, just kind of. Such a nice guy, man. You know, he's a great guy. Um, yeah. You know, he's been kind of, he's been good to me, uh, just making sure how I'm doing and all that sort of stuff, making sure everything's all right. Um, and this is before I got hurt. Um, 
but I mean, it's been every, I mean, everyone's been very kind to me since I have gotten hurt. I mean, everyone's been kind of asking like how I'm doing all that sort of stuff. There's no kind of like, there's a, there's no kind of border there between like the NHL guys and then the prospects. Um, I mean, right. everyone's been very kind to me. Guys like Drake Bathurst and Josh Norris have pretty much come up to me every single day, which I'm very thankful for. And I mean, hopefully one day I can play, maybe play with those guys. Yeah. Nice. Um, so uh, kind of a follow-up to uh, Jamie's first question. Was there any, who's like an underrated person in the sentence system, uh, mostly in Belleville that you played with, um, that some guys kind of really stand out that you don't really see in the media a whole bunch. Um, so obviously everybody's excited for you, Sokolov, um, and just a bunch of other guys, but like who's a dark horse for a fan favorite and making the team? I think Mark Cast, like, Yeah. Like he's just an absolute, like, Okay, one, he literally looks like a Greek god. Like the guy, the guy I don't think honestly has a shred of fat on his body. It is, I don't know how how it how he got that. I'm like, fuck, I work out like two and a half hours of the summer that I'm on the ice two times a week. How, how the hell did? How, come on, man. Like this is this is built fair. different, built yeah. different. I'm telling you. So I, I've come to the realization. I'm just chalking that up to genetics, and I just was not gifted by God to have <laughs> like that. Um, but no, he is, I mean, obviously he's a monster. He's so strong on the puck. And then obviously yeah. defensively so responsible. And he obviously has the physical tools for it. But what I don't think he gets enough credit for is his ability to think the game. Yeah. Like everyone immediately thinks, oh, the frame is 6'3", 225 pounds and can skate really well. But I don't think he gets enough, gets enough credit for the way he thinks the game and the skill that he actually has. I mean, in the rookie games, he essentially dominated guys physically, like in the corners, no one was getting the puck off the guy. Like it was, yeah. it's just not and, possible. And I don't, I, I don't think there was any stats sheets put out, but I'm pretty sure in one of those rookie games, I don't think he lost a face off and he took a whole bunch of them. Yeah. No, I, I don't, you know, he, he's very consistent. On the draws. I mean, it, it helps when you have absolute bowling balls for shoulders. You aren't going <laughs> to win. You aren't going to lose very many stick paddles. Yeah. Um, like that. But, uh, no, I think he is definitely an underrated prospect for sure. And a good yeah, buddy of mine. There's a lot of, uh, not a lot, but there's a good chunk of people that always claim that Mark Stelic is like one of the better guys coming out of the AHL and he almost deserves a spot this year. Um, oh, yeah. And it, it's not like widely talked about enough. So 100%, I agree with that answer. I mean, from a different perspective, but yeah. No, 100%. No, I don't think he gets enough attention whatsoever. 100%. Yeah. You got anything else, Jamie? No, you answered my questions. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, I, I guess I really only have one more. Um, what's it like um, playing for Troy, man? So you only played, I think it was 19 games in Belleville last year. Um, so what's the biggest takeaway coming from um, the NCAA to an AHL coach? Um, and like kind of what's his style? Um, obviously, there's a lot of development that happens in Belleville. Um, so like what's kind of the forefront of his mentality on the ice? Manor is a great coach. I mean, honestly, I put him up there as one of the best coaches I've had. I mean, obviously, it's it's definitely a different type of coach for sure because it's, I mean, it's pro hockey. It's completely different. Um, where like college and junior year, it's more of, um, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's, it's different. Whereas pro, it's kind of, I mean, it's a business now. It's an expectation, but it's more there's, intense, there's, I guess there's that level of intensity that manner has, but also that level of like, he wants to see you succeed. Oh. And he has a really good kind of balance between one wanting to win games, which obviously any coach wants to, at the end of the day, wants to win games and needs to win games for their job and that sort of stuff. But at the same time, he's so focused on developing guys and help, making sure guys are doing the right things to make themselves the best player that they can be and get to the next level. I think there's a great job. They do a great job with uh, kind of the cohesion between the big club and obviously Belleville. Yeah. I think everything's very synonymous there and there's a lot of communication back and forth, but I mean, I, I loved playing for Manor. Um, he, uh, I, I mean, I was lucky enough to be able to get some opportunities when I came in to college, but uh, I was thankful for the belief that he put in me from the, from the get go. And, uh, I mean, I think if you ask anyone in that room, he's definitely a very good coach to play for. 
Yeah, and that's kind of one of the tough things, like you mentioned, is finding the balance between um, development and we're here to win. Um, and yeah, we definitely can see both sides of that game in Belleville, um, and especially under right. Troy Mann. And I, I think you're 100% right with the they kind of run parallel Ottawa and Belleville, um, just kind of really communicating with each other, know what the expectations of each other are and whatnot. So yeah, bang on. Yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, definitely, it's definitely a good place to be if you're a prospect for sure. I'm very thankful. Yeah. Um, so I think that's all we have for you today. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on um, and taking 20 minutes of your time and, uh, obviously, you're staying in the hotel and you have six months of time, but uh, still appreciate you taking the time. No, of course, guys. I mean, any, anytime I love doing this stuff and I appreciate you guys uh, taking me to come on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that. thanks, everybody, for watching uh, or listening if you're on Spotify. Um, and we will see you next time.